I went to get married. The man obviously needed somebody to help him study. Money wasn't coming from his father, he was a co cocoa farmer in Undo. And it was in those days you had a wife, you sent to work, the money comes in, you manage like that. So he needed a scholarship, I call it. I hadn't thought of it like that. I just went because I was, well, if you go to England, you went to study. That was my own, that I'm going to cross over there because I'm struggling here if I go there. It looks like it's going to be better for me to study there than here. No distractions. And then I got married and all that. And then I worked with him, for him, and, and I was making progress in my work, making good money. And he qualified. He was studying accountancy. He qualified. But in the meantime, I wanted to go to, I'm going to night school, I'm going to the library. And he thought, no, he was studying for both of us. And I thought I was off, <laughs> to say the least. You don't study for both of us, I want to study. And he said, no, I'm stubborn. And you're Miko, you're stubborn, you think you're arrogant. I said, no. So he started beating me. I mustn't go to high school. I mustn't go to the library. I uh, thought I was running around or whatever it is. So I thought, okay, I stayed. When he qualified and he got an internship, I felt I'd done my duty. I've paid back. He got me to England and gave me the opportunity to be studying. I've paid him. He's okay, he's on his own now. So I packed up, I packed out. They were looking for me. They thought I had run away with the man. I did it at a time at Christmas. It was a long Christmas from, from Friday to Monday. I knew they wouldn't be able to come and see me in the office. So when Christmas Eve, when we broke up and he was at work, I was out. So he didn't know where to look for me. Later on, they were shadowing me about. And they found out all I did was finish work, go to night school, go to the library, go home. I had an apartment with one girl, civil service. They're all organized over there. So if you're in town, you can hire an apartment as big as you like. If you have people to share with, you shared the rent with them. So I had a bedroom, she had a bedroom and we shared a sitting room together and all the other facilities. So they were following, they shadowed me all over and then weeks later they knocked at my door. My husband's friends, close friends and relations. And I said, ah, how did you find us? They, they told me they had been following me. And that, uh, why did I leave? They thought I went with a man. And they'd be following me. I saw what I was doing. I was going to school and everything. What happened? The man said, you did not fight. I said, no, we didn't, uh, we didn't fight, but he's not my husband. They said, what do you mean it's not, it was not your husband? We came to your wedding. <laughs> I said, well, he didn't have the ambition that I had for myself. I thought if he was my husband, he would know. He would not want to stop me from having a future. And therefore, that was it. And he was beating me. And that's not my husband. My husband should cherish his wife. I don't know how old I was then. I said, so it's not the marriage I thought I was coming for. It's not my wife. It's not my husband. So I left him. Anyway, I sued him for a divorce. They wanted me to. They wanted him to give me an alimony, and I said I didn't want any because I want to cut it off. That's it. Because if he was giving me alimony, he still had a tie to me. And he's not going to be sending me checks with, with blessings. You know, he needed to have his own life and I have mine. I, want to, I like freedom. The greatest freedom you can have in life is to be able to live your life in your own way. That's the greatest freedom. And I wanted to do that. At that age, that's what I wanted for myself. I was in my early 20s then. I must be 23, 24. And so, uh, that's how I left that marriage. I think it must be uh, five or so years later, I met my late husband, Tom Lysett. Mm -hmm.